China is going through a serious economic crisis that could lead them to total financial collapse. But what many don't realize is that if China's economy does collapse, it could take the rest of the world with it by trying to control Taiwan. That's because Taiwan exports over 60% of all microchips in the world. Not only that, but they export over 90% of the high performance chips that go into everything from our cell phones and laptops to our satellites and our fighter jets. I've covered the importance of these chip makers in the past and the risks of virtually all of them being made in Taiwan, which is prone to earthquakes, monsoons, and other natural disasters. But I stayed silent on the biggest risk of all, which is China deciding to take Taiwan and stop them from exporting these technologies that we all rely on. Now the situation has become a moment in history that everybody needs to know about. So let me show you why the situation in China could impact us way more than people realize. Let's start with what's at stake, the world's semiconductors. Semiconductors are microchips that power everything from your iPhone and laptop to the brake sensors in your car. There are a lot of different companies that design microchips. Companies like Apple, ARM, Nvidia, and AMD, just to name a few. But these companies don't make their own chips, since that involves highly advanced manufacturing machines and processes. Instead, they outsource production to companies with specialized chip manufacturing plants called foundries. According to recent studies, just one one company, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, accounted for 54% of the global chip market at the end of 2020, just TSMC. As scary as that number sounds, it's not the one that scares me the most. In addition to making most of the world's computer chips, TSMC also produces the world's most advanced computer chips. It's not just iPhones and MacBooks, but the chips found in fighter jets and missile defense systems. As a result, a mind-boggling 92% of the world's advanced chips are made by TSMC, with the rest being made by Samsung, which is in South Korea. TSMC is currently valued at around $450 billion, making them the most valuable company in Asia and the 10th most valuable company in the world. World. But in reality, TSMC is probably the closest company in the world to being truly priceless because they're many years and many more billions of dollars ahead of every other chip manufacturer on the planet, like Intel, who's been plagued with production delays for years now. Also, there are three other major companies with foundries in Taiwan, United Microelectronics Corp, or UMC, Vanguard International Semiconductor, or VIS, and Powerchip Semiconductor Manufacturing Corp, or PSMC. Together, these three companies make up another 9% of the global chip market. So in total, 63% of the world's chips come from Taiwan. So if China gets desperate enough and decides to cut Taiwan off from the rest of the world, they would have a monopoly on the world's chip supply and we would have nowhere else to turn for this critical technology. And that makes them and the rest of Taiwan a prize worth pursuing. And between Russia's recent invasion of Ukraine and the turmoil going on in China right now, the risk of them invading Taiwan could be higher than most people realize. Taiwan is officially known as the Republic of China, and it's an island that's separated from the People's Republic of China by the Taiwan Strait, which is less than 100 miles wide. The PRC, or mainland China, views Taiwan as a renegade province and has vowed to eventually seize it and reunify it with the mainland. But Taiwan has its own democratic government, and tensions between them and China have escalated since 2016, when Taiwan elected their current president, Chai Ing-wen. President Chai Ing-wen is known for having strong views on Taiwanese independence. It's a tense situation, just like the one between Russia and Ukraine leading up to Russia's invasion earlier this year. Let me show you a few clear examples of how the current situation between China and Taiwan has been escalating. Since Chai Ing-wen's election, China has dramatically increased the number and scale of their military exercises around Taiwan. They're flying more patrols of fighter jets and surveillance aircraft near Taiwanese airspace. They're moving more warships through the Taiwan Strait, and they're jailing Taiwanese activists on politically motivated charges. One such prominent case is Li Ming Che, a well-known pro-Taiwanese democracy and human rights activist. In spring of 2017, Mr. Li traveled to Macau and then south to Guangdong, when he suddenly went missing. 
after almost two weeks, China announced that Mr. Li had been detained for, quote, pursuing activities harmful to national security and subverting state power, end quote. His crime? Talking about China-Taiwan relations and multi-party democracy on various social media and messaging platforms. Li Mingche was sentenced to five years in a Chinese detention center. He was just released this past spring, but several other Taiwanese activists are still in Chinese detention centers on politically motivated charges today. In 2018, China directly warned Taiwan against moves towards independence, and then conducted their largest ever Navy parade, followed by live fire military exercises in the Taiwan Strait. This was a full on parade of warships, including an aircraft carrier, submarines, and fighter jets. Many of these military assets were then moved towards Taiwan in a massive show of force, and it wouldn't be the only one, not by a long shot. In 2020, then U.S. Undersecretary of State Keith Cratch put together a $12 billion plan for TSMC to build a new foundry in the United States, which set the stage for other chipmakers to build their own facilities in the U.S. and lower the world's dependence on China for semiconductors. After brokering that deal, Cratch visited Taiwan to speak with President Tsai Ing-wen and Morris Chang, the founder of TSMC. In response, China held two days of large-scale defense drills off Taiwan's southwestern coast. Coast. Then, China's defense ministry accused the U.S. and Taiwan of, quote, stepping up collusion, end quote. And they told reporters that using Taiwan to control China was wishful thinking. China urged the U.S. not to send any wrong signals to elements of Taiwan independence unless they wanted to cause severe damage to the U.S.-China relation. Then he added, quote, those who play with fire will get burned, end quote. Just last year, China flew 56 warplanes into Taiwan's air defense zone in a single day, stopping just short of their sovereign airspace. The planes included dozens of fighter jets, H-6 bombers, fighter planes, and even anti-submarine bombers. China flew almost 1,000 military flights around Taiwan in 2021 alone, forcing Taiwan's air force to almost continuously scramble their own planes. These kinds of large-scale military provocations are meant to put political pressure on Taiwan, destabilize the entire region, and undermine the peace. Remember, Russia's invasion of Ukraine started with quote-unquote military exercises along Ukraine's borders. Even if there's no direct combat during these exercises, they still cause Taiwan's pilots and military personnel to be stretched thin for if and when the Chinese invasion does finally come. Let's jump to today. Earlier this month, U.S. Speaker of the House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi and a delegation of five House Democrats went to Taiwan to meet with President Tsai Ing-wen and other Taiwanese leaders. Pelosi is the highest ranking U.S. official to visit Taiwan in 25 years. Pelosi said that her visit, quote, should be seen as an unequivocal statement that America stands with Taiwan as it defends itself and its freedom, end quote. Here's the problem. Instead of having direct diplomatic relations with Taiwan, the U.S. maintains mostly unofficial relationships with them. The U.S. and most of the world have always at least acknowledged China's claim over Taiwan, even if they don't endorse it. So Pelosi's visit basically poured salt on China's wounds and undermined decades of U.S.-China relations around Taiwan. As you'd expect, China is claiming that Pelosi's visit is a breach of the One China policy, and China responded by threatening strong measures against Taiwan. Then, they began flying more warplanes along the line, dividing the Taiwan Strait. But that's just the beginning. Just a few days ago, China released a new white paper that lays out their vision for a post-reunification Taiwan. The paper begins by highlighting China's commitment to resolving the Taiwan question and realizing China's complete reunification. For the first time, they left open the possibility of an extended military occupation of Taiwan after reunifying them with the mainland. The threat of China launching a full-scale invasion is very real. China is currently conducting more military drills around Taiwan, including 10 military ships and 45 fighter jets encircling the entire island. The focus of these drills is on containment and resupply logistics, and earlier they practiced anti-submarine and sea assault tactics in the event of U.S. support. The drills were scheduled to end last week, but China has extended them, announcing that they would, quote, continue to carry out military training and prepare for war, end quote. China is also ramping up a propaganda campaign right now by publishing maps and posts that highlight Chinese culture in Taiwanese cities, similar to Vladimir Putin's propaganda campaigns in Ukraine. In response, Taiwan has started their own military drills, 
Taiwan's foreign minister has officially warned that China may be preparing for a full-scale invasion. If the recent chip shortage has shown us anything, it's that the world isn't ready for this to happen. According to TSMC's chairman Mark Liu, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would render TSMC's factories non-operable because it takes very specific, high-skilled workers to run the complex machines that build our chips. Interrupting TSMC's operations even for just a little while would plunge the world into turmoil. Think about the impacts that the current global chip shortage has already had. Prices for new and used electronics and appliances have skyrocketed. The auto industry grinded to a complete halt and lost over $100 billion in vehicle production delays. And that's just a taste of the total mayhem that would take over the world if Taiwan's semiconductor industry stops producing chips and the world's electronic supply chain stops working completely. Yes, the United States just passed the CHIPS Act and new semiconductor foundries are being built here, but that will take many years and many billions of dollars and tons of recruitment before we come close to rivaling Taiwan's decades-long monopoly on semiconductor manufacturing. And that brings me to the main point, which is the most favorable time for China to invade Taiwan is sooner rather than later. China has been experiencing skyrocketing household debt levels thanks to their ongoing housing crisis, but they also face serious resource insecurities due to limited oil and gas reserves and labor shortages due to severe population decline. So China's current economic and military powers are about as close as they're going to get to the United States, which means their chances of successfully reunifying Taiwan will slowly start to go down over time. As we've seen with Russia and Ukraine, these things don't happen overnight. So China has a huge incentive to start putting this long-term plan into motion. And they know it. But now, so do you. This channel focuses on learning about the innovations and technologies that are transforming our daily lives, many of which are only possible because of the microchips produced in Taiwan. If you want to learn more about how TSMC became one of the most important companies in the world, check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next update on this very important story. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.